Hey guys, today we'll be checking out another set of tips and tricks for Windows Phone 7. So first up, I'll show you how to add a new word to a dictionary. So, for example, you want to add a new word that is not there in the dictionary by default. If you select the word, you'll see that it'll come up with a small plus symbol. So if you press on that, that word will get added to the dictionary on Windows Phone 7. And next up, I'll show you how to do copy-paste, which is quite simple. So once you type in something, it could be in multiple lines. You just select the word, click and drag, and press the small button here that pops up, which should copy it, and it should show you a small paste button at the end. So you could paste it in wherever you want. And if you want to paste it multiple times, you just slide across and that will bring the paste tag on back. So you could paste it multiple times. And one other handy trick that you can find with the Windows Phone 7 keyboard is, say you are uh, using the text keyboard and you want to use a number for example you type in best WP7 games you want to go in press 7 go back and do games an easier way would be type in best WP7 and click on the Amazon 1 2 3 drag your finger to 7 without releasing it and if you take it off you'll see that after you put in that single digit you can go back the keyboard will automatically take you back to the uh, alphabet keyboard so the idea is to click and drag to the one that you want and release but if you click and release it'll just stay on that keyboard And one other thing is that there is an audio recorder on Windows Phone 7. So to access that, you have to go to OneNote. And while in OneNote, you can press this microphone button down here. And you can say whatever you want. And once you stop it, that will get added as an audio file. And another trick that you can use on Windows Phone 7 is with the picture tile. So in the picture tile you can change the panoramic background which will also reflect in the light tile that you have on the home screen. So you can either choose an image you want just by clicking and holding on the screen which will bring up a menu here which will uh, say you can either change it to the one that you want which will add the panoramic image to the background or you can just go change it for me which will also change the image here and this will get changed automatically in some specific time I'm not really sure what time frame it uses but you'll see that that'll get changed from time to time automatically Another tip is in the call history page. You have the option to delete all the call history or if you want to delete individual items you can do that as well by pressing and holding and that should bring up a menu which says delete that item. You can delete that and the single item will get deleted. And now I'll show you another trick that you can delete multiple emails or mark multiple emails as read or unread, uh, like mark it as unread using a simple trick. So to the left side of your email just click on the left side that should bring up the multiple selection menu so you can click on multiple one of these move it to a different folder or delete them or clicking on the three dots will bring up a menu which gives you more options so you can mark them as unread so you'll see that that will get changed 
Next up is context sensitive search. So when you're in select application like the email application, you can click on the hardware search button and search for specific items. So only the items with that particular word in there will pop up. The similar thing works in the marketplace as well. If you touch the hardware search button, you can search for apps in the marketplace. But it doesn't always work in all the apps, so it's only limited apps that uses the uh, context-sensitive search. With the Bing app, when you click on the hardware button and you launch into the Bing app, you'll see that this is an image that gets changed on, uh, every day. If you want some information about this particular image, you can click on the small copyright button down here. That should give you some information about that image. And yesterday we showed you that with the calculator uh, app, you can turn it in the normal position. It works as a normal calculator. Switching it to the left, you get a scientific calculator. And what, if you switch it to the right, it actually changes to a programmer's calculator. So in the next video, I'll show you what happens when you switch it upside down. So those are the 10 tips that I have for you today. And do let us know what tips you want us to feature in this. And we'll try and include them in the next video. Thanks for watching.